Alright, loads has happened since we did our last transfer rumour roundup. Let's talk about everything. Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. We have got plenty to discuss today. The transfer rumour mill is seriously kicking up into action at the moment. Over this past week, the championship has gone absolutely bonkers in terms of rumours. In today's video, we're going to be discussing all of them. We've also got the FA Cup action coming up at the weekend as well, so feel free to leave your thoughts on that in the comments down below. But we are here today to discuss all of the transfer action. As always, if you do go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Without any further ado though, let's first of all talk about the completed deals. So Steve Cook completed his move to Nottingham Forest, this one being announced literally as we published that last transfer room around that video, but seems like a decent bit of business here for Forest, especially if they are going to be keeping hold of Joe Worrell. Cook in a back three alongside Worrell and next to McKenna as well, makes for a really solid foundation, you know, he's going into a defence that has already been pretty steady so far this season under Steve Cooper so yeah decent bit of business there adds a bit more experience into that back line as well and Bournemouth wasted absolutely no time in going ahead and replacing Steve Cook with 19 year old James Hill who's come over from Fleetwood Town there were quite a few Premier League clubs who were potentially interested in Hill as well but Bournemouth have won the race for this one he's an England under 20 international fee being just above that 1 million mark and by all accounts looks like a really nice bit of business here from Bournemouth. And we also had confirmation of Ethan Laird making that switch to Bournemouth as well. Spent the first half of the season out on loan at Swansea and will be spending the second half of the season out on loan at Bournemouth. You can't help but feel like that is really quite the hammer blow to Swansea. The way they were sort of building up their system, him on that right hand side as that wing back was a pretty integral role. So it'll be interesting to see how Swansea go about trying to replace him in the January window. But yeah, Bournemouth have added some serious depth there. Blackburn completed the signing of James Brown. He's coming in after a successful trial last month on a free transfer to initially join up with the under-23 squad. And Peterborough have snapped up Norwich's Bally Mumba for the rest of the season on loan. Mumba we've not seen all too much of in the Norwich shirt. Um, just played 45 minutes of Premier League football so far this season with a couple of appearances in the League Cup as well. I remember speaking about this transfer actually when Norwich originally picked him up from Sunderland um, a couple of years ago in the transfer room around up. But by all accounts still has a very high ceiling and a little bit more regular first team football at championship level will probably do him some good at this stage of his career we've also seen Jordi Asai 2-2 return to Arsenal from his loan spell at Nottingham Forest a shame about this one really because he did show some real glimpses of potential in the Forest ship but just hasn't really been able to find that um, consistency in terms of fitness so far this season and it does open up now another loan slot for Forest to go ahead and use for this January window so probably makes sense but those are some of the moves that we've seen go through in the past few days. Now, without any further ado, let's hop into some transfer rumours. So we'll start out with the transfer rumour that's got absolutely everyone talking at the moment. Florian Balogun on his way to Middlesbrough for the rest of the season on a loan deal from Arsenal. Now, the factor of this deal which has got absolutely everyone going crazy on social media is the fact that he's on 40 grand a week and Middlesbrough will reportedly be covering the entirety of that wage from now until the end of the season, which as a headline and on the face surface does seem a little bit outrageous. You know, a player who's not had really any experience at senior level already being on that sort of money and the fact that a championship club will be covering that sort of wage. But the more you do a little bit of a dig into it, the more you can sort of make sense out of it, I suppose, to a certain degree. Loan fees for high quality and high end loan players from Premier League clubs have been quite commonplace now in the championship for some time. I remember Cardiff playing, paying quite a sizable fee for Harry Wilson on loan last season. So if there's no loan fee agreed in this one and it's just, you know, Middlesbrough going to be paying his wages for the rest of the season, then they're looking at around about 700 grand for the rest of the season just for this loan deal. And that is you know, pretty comparable at that stage to what other championship clubs have probably played for similar players to get on loan for this season. Middlesbrough are going for a promotion push at the moment and this is them rolling the dice on that, I suppose. Gamble comes from the fact that he's not had 
all too much experience at senior level so far. His numbers in the youth team and at Premier League 2 level are absolutely outstanding. There's no doubt in that. Um, in the Premier League 2 this season, he's had 11 appearances, scored 13 goals and got 4 assists. His record at under-18s level is absolutely outrageously good in terms of goals. But it's not really a comparable level to the Championship. And we've seen other players with similar sort of goal scoring figures come to the Championship in sort of the formative years of their career. And it just didn't quite click for them. Middlesbrough are happy to roll the dice on this one though and to be fair to them they have you know cut that wage bill that they've had there quite sizably over the last few years we think about the last few strikers that they've actually had at the club really and how many sort of big money flops they've actually had in that position you know think about the money they spent on Akpom, Asamba Longa, Fletcher, Braithwaite the list seems absolutely endless so Middlesbrough going down a slightly different route this time with the sort of loan market we've already seen them going for Aaron Connolly as well and when we have a bit of a deeper dig into their underlying numbers so far this season in terms of their conversion rate it's no surprise to see why they were after a couple more forwards. Uh, Middlesbrough are in the bottom half of the championship in terms of their shot conversion rate this season, just 7%, which isn't great. I think the most baffling thing to me is the fact that Arsenal are paying him 40 grand in the first place, but that just shows the sort of inflation of wages among um, youngsters in the Premier League, I suppose. Next up then, and we were just speaking about him on yesterday's video, but Jed Wallace is being linked with the move to Nottingham Forest. Now, with his contract running out at the end of the season, I think that Millwall fans sort of thought that this interest in January was going to be inevitable, really. Uh, there's also a reported pre-contract offer on the table from Besiktas as well, but Nottingham Forest are keen to get another player added into their squad in this January window. We spoke about the links to Josh Bowler from Blackpool last time around, but Jed Wallace has now popped up on the Nottingham Forest radar, and I mean, Forest options in those sort of wide areas, if they were to get Jed Wallace in January, would be absolutely ridiculous to be honest with you, you know, Brennan Johnson, Alex Might and Zinka Nagel, uh, Joe Lolly who they've still got around. I'm probably still forgetting some names in there as well but Jed Wallace might just be the best of the bunch. He has been an elite player at championship level for at least the last like four seasons now to be honest with you. His numbers are absolutely off the charts and 27 years old as well so you know in his prime years um, of his career at this point in time. If Forrest were able to get a deal done for a sort of cut price because he's only got six months left in his contract, that would go down as one of the bargains of the, of the century in the championship. He's that good. Rotherham striker Freddie Ladapo has handed in a transfer request, which is quite the interesting one. Rotherham going really well in League One at the moment, but obviously he's fancying a new challenge. I would expect a few championship clubs to be sniffing around this one. He had a fairly decent sort of goal to minute ratio in the championship last season. Scored nine goals for Rotherham, averaged a goal every 233 minutes, which is... Decent going, to be honest with you. So far this season, his goals to minute ratio, once again, has been decent. Scored eight goals and got two assists, uh, starting just 14 matches for Rotherham this far into the season. Blackpool are said to be going back in for Oxford United midfielder Cameron Brannigan. Now, this is a position that we expect Blackpool to strengthen in this window, and they were previously linked with Brannigan. They had a few bids rejected last summer, actually, and they've resurfaced their interest in January, reportedly having a 500 grand bid being rejected by Oxford. Oxford. So this, I'm sure, will be a rumour that continues to rumble on throughout the January window, as it did throughout the summer last time, really. He's currently got 18 months left in his contract, but would be a smart bit of business, this by Blackpool. I've always quite liked Brannigan, done really well for Oxford. And it is now the next day that I'm recording this second half of the video, hence why my hair has just got a little bit shorter, but still got plenty of rumours to talk through. Brandon Mason is currently on trial at Reading as they're looking to address their fullback issues heading into January, of course, with a couple of them away at AFCON at the moment. It has left them looking particularly light in that area. Brandon Mason, currently a free agent, most recently played his football on loan out in Scotland for St Mirren while he was at Coventry. And plenty is going on surrounding Hull City at the moment. Now, we're still waiting for sort of official confirmation of the table takeover actually going through and once that actually takes place we'll dive into it in a little bit more detail in terms of what that could mean for Hull for the rest of the season but if that is given the green light then we could see plenty of new additions coming in at Hull from now until the end of the window. One name they're heavily being linked to at the moment is a move for winger Josh Sims currently a free agent he spent uh, last season out on loan at Doncaster where he did fairly well to be honest with you one goal seven assists in 20 starts. 24 years old Sheffield Wednesday have also been mentioned with this one though. This is where things start to 
get a little bit silly though because Hull have been linked to every name under the sun at the moment around European football. Japanese midfielder Hyde Masamorita is currently being linked with the move to Hull City with a fee of around 5 million euros currently being quoted. Now, we can't really back up all too much behind these rumours until the takeover actually goes through. So at the moment, we're sort of just in limbo with all these shots at the moment, but they're coming from absolutely everywhere. USA fullback Ryan Reynolds had also been linked with the move to Hull City, although more recently he's now been linked with the move to Anderlecht. Sheffield United midfielder Regan Slater has also been linked with the move back to Hull City, this time on a permanent basis. This has been one which has been rumoured for quite some time now. It was heavily rumoured in the most recent of a transfer window, although Wigan Athletic are also be said to be keen on the midfielder. Hull have also been linked to Turkish midfielder Amirani Dogan at the moment. The names being linked to Hull at the moment are absolutely endless and I'm sure that we'll continue to get more as the next few days and weeks go on. And Nottingham Forest have reportedly knocked back a £12 million bid for Brennan Johnson from Brentford. No surprise that this transfer rumour has resurfaced itself. Brennan Johnson had quite a few interesting parties from the Premier League eyeing him up over the summer. Brentford probably the most um, of which who are fancying him. £12 million if that's to be believed though. Not a fee to be sniffed at but you would imagine that Forrest would be holding out for a little bit more and this could potentially also explain the interest recently in both Josh Bowler and Jed Wallace as well as they're looking for some more options particularly on that right hand side. From Brentford's point of view this one makes a lot of sense really you know young person who would come into that recruitment strategy they've got you know more money to splash not that they are in the Premier League as well. Forest fans how much would you be holding out for on this one? Sheffield United confirmed their interest in John Sutar obviously brother of Harry Sutar. There have been quite a few championship clubs um, mentioning the conversation with this one for quite some time. I remember mentioning him previously I think links to Blackburn back then but plenty of clubs in for him like I say Sheffield United confirmed their interest through Paul Heckenbottom. Middlesbrough have been another club linked and Ray Changes more recently, very heavily linked with the move as well. Good player, albeit he's been quite unfortunate with injuries over the past few years. I think he's ruptured his Achilles twice now, I think. Celta Vega midfielder Oke Lukushlu has been linked with the move to Fulham. Now, obviously, we saw him in England last season where, to be honest, I thought he did a pretty good job at West Brom on loan there. Certainly was a standout performer in a side that was ultimately relegated from the Premier League, but West Brom fans were very keen to get him back. Wouldn't be surprised if they throw their hat into the ring as well if he does come up and available on the loan deal this January. But guys, there we have it. That will wrap it up for today's video and for the transfer rumour roundup. As always, coming up next week, we'll have plenty more rumours to go ahead and digest. We've got the FA Cup action coming up over the weekend as well. So like I said at the start, feel free to leave your thoughts on those games in the comments down below. Do you fancy your side's chances of progressing through to the third round? Let me know. Apart from that though, guys, that will wrap it up. So if you did go to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Apart from that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.